Welcome to Democrats Discuss. This is our monthly program which brings together Democrat elected and appointed officials to discuss the issues that are facing our state. Uh, today, I am extremely thrilled to have two leaders in our state that are very well known to most of the folks in the audience. Sitting to my right is Representative Marvin Abney, and we are also joined today by Mayor James Deosa of Central Falls. Uh, Representative Abney represents Newport and part of Middletown. He is a deputy majority leader. Uh, he is a retired United States Army major. He also holds uh, an MBA and an advanced degree in education. He has worked in his retirement for the Rhode Island Department of Education. Correct. And Representative Abney, this summer you further distinguished yourself by becoming a toll fellow. Less than one half of one percent of our nation's leaders participate in a rigorous leadership training program. And I'm very pleased to say that my colleague uh, Marvin Abney has joined those ranks. Uh, Mayor Deosa graduated from Central Falls High School. And Mayor, I was very impressed to learn that in your senior year, you led Central Falls High School soccer team to a state championship. Okay. No small accomplishment. He is a graduate of Becker College, a criminal justice major. Okay. Very interesting. And then after graduation, the mayor went back to Central Falls. And I love this. You coached youth soccer, okay. was elected to the city council for two terms. And at the tender age of 27 years old, became the mayor of one of the most diverse cities uh, in the state of Rhode Island. No small accomplishment. And since that time, he has dealt with a financial crisis, rebuilding the economy of Central Falls, and uh, just doing a tremendous job. But Mayor Deosa, I'm going to start with recently what's been in the news. Everyone in the United States uh, has been transfixed for this past week with the visit of Pope Francis. Mm -hmm. And as one of our nation's younger mayors, who is also uh, completely fluent in Spanish, you were sought out to uh, greet, the May greet the Pope, Pope Francis, mm -hmm at the White House, and that has to be just an unbelievable experience. Could you just touch on that a yeah, little bit for our viewers? Once again, Chairman, Chairman, thank you for inviting me here, and Representative Abney, who's a friend. Uh, I was very honored to be able to represent Central Falls, uh, uh, to see the President receive the Pope. I think uh, it was truly an experience, not only for myself, but for the country. Uh, I, uh, if there's anything I can describe what was felt uh, when the president received the pope was everyone was like in shock when they saw the pope and then 10 seconds later everyone just screaming and uh, excited about him being at the White House. So uh, two things, not only for myself, uh, my, uh, my own experience, but being there for Central Falls uh, rep on behalf of Central Falls is tru truly an honor for me to say. Yeah. And it was interesting, Mayor, uh, I thought this, the Pope might be more comfortable in speaking in his native language, which is Spanish. Correct. But he, you said he spoke mostly in yeah, English? Yeah, he, he spoke English, uh, and he did very well. And I, I think all the speeches that he has given in his tour of America, uh, the United States, uh, were truly impressive and really resonated with many people across religions. Uh, and uh, I think the overall message, especially us in public service, is that we got to continue helping those that need our help and giving an equal opportunity to all. So, uh, again, great experience of my life. Very good. And as your experiences as mayor, 
Uh, I know you're very active cutting ribbons to new restaurants in Central Falls and turning some of those mills into loft space. How would you rank it as your mayoral experiences so far? I, I think, I think, uh, I think every single day is an extraordinary experience because not only uh, do I wake up with the energy of knowing that my role for the city is important, uh, I want to leave this place much better. Uh, you know, Central Falls went through bankruptcy and it was a talk of not only the state but the nation. And uh, having the team that I have together today and leaders up at the st State House, like both of you, we, we really want to be part of that growing fabric of making Rhode Island great again. And I think we're doing our part. And uh, there's been a lot of uh, new businesses moving in, people actually buying their homes, education systems getting better. Our food is, I, I think, we can compete because uh, it's so good. Um, <coughs> And uh, it, we've opened the doors to, to uh, uh, people who want to move and start a business there and make it friendlier for everyone. Very good. Uh, getting back to, uh, you are both members of our affirmative action plan. Representative uh, Abney was uh, voted as chair of the affirmative action plan and has been extremely uh, involved in this process, bringing democracy to the citizens of the state of Rhode Island. Uh, as the viewers are probably aware of, every four years uh, we get a chance to participate in one of the most premier democratic processes, selecting our next president and vice president of the United States. Both the Republicans and the Democrats have conventions where these candidates are chosen. Uh, Representative Abney, as chairman of our affirmative action plan, I know that uh, we have participated in several outreach programs in the community. Uh, could you explain a little bit to us about how this process rolls out? Yeah, and thank you very much for inviting me. And I have to say, too, that my great friend, uh, Mayor Dilso, and I met years ago when he, as he's doing now, was very involved in the community that he lived in, working with kids. He would bring them uh, part of the college crusade, and I would be giving a speech on a Saturday morning, and he would show up with 40 or 50 kids, and has always been involved, and we talked a lot about uh, exactly what we're talking about now, getting involved in the system and making things happen. And who's to know, that three or four years later, both he and I uh, got involved and we're doing this now. But back to the question, uh, it's absolutely uh, critical particularly from the affirmative action perspective, but from any perspective, that uh, starting well before now, that citizens understand that we are a representative democracy, which basically means that someone represents your interest uh, in what happens. And so it doesn't start just now, but it starts way back in your community meetings, uh, uh, in your communities at home. And what we do now is make sure that we look at the population that are Democrats or who are unaffiliated voters to make sure that there's an inclusive part that anyone who wants to be a part of this process has that opportunity to do so. There are no guarantees, but we do go into the communities as we've done uh, and explain the process of becoming a delegate so that your ideas, your, your wishes, your priorities do get to individuals that are delegates, and hopefully the people that we talk to will become a delegate themselves, and that will help. But we really try to reach out to the communities that are not always represented in that, and it's not just a minority community, but people with disabilities, uh, the LBGT communities, and obviously uh, African Americans, Hispanics, you name it, to make sure they understand that the process exists so that you can become a part of it. And it's pretty easy once you, uh, you know, once you come to one of these meetings and just ask, how do I become a delegate? Very interesting. And Mayor, two of our good friends, Representative Grace Diaz and Representative Shelby Maldonado, are co-chairing the Latino Caucus. In your community, as we approach this critical time in our election process, uh, is there a lot of excitement uh, relating to the presidential campaign? Yes, there's, there's a, a lot of excitement, and I think uh, the fact that you've been able to see more Latino candidates get elected to office, especially with the last one being our Secretary of State, uh, Nelly Gorbea, there's been an, an, an excitement of learning how to get involved 
and about the process. And the fact that uh, we've been able to go around the state and provide this information, uh, they, they are being very receptive. And I think you hit the nail on the head. Uh, 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 it's about being able to represent all these communities. And you know, being Latino myself, I think uh, there, there's going to be an excitement within the community to get involved. And you'll see a representation there. Well, that's great. I know Representative Abney, uh, two weeks ago, we were down in Warwick, we were in Bristol going around the state. Uh, you struck a chord with folks that were uh, attending uh, our Delegate Selection Plan presentation. You mentioned running into a uh, retired officer in the gym in Newport. Could you just touch on that a little bit? I, they found that very moving. It's the first time I have seen lately where people lined up to ask for your autograph <laughs> at the end of the presentation, which is encouraging. Could you just touch on that little story? It was a magical moment. Uh, what really gets uh, my blood going is to see people and to talk to people who tell me all of the time that what they do, particularly those in the military, and it's close to my heart, what they do every day, day in and day out, it's not so much for themselves, but it's for this system of government that we have. And this gentleman, I actually saw a baseball cap. I was in the gym uh, working out. I try to work out hard at least three or four days a week. <laughs> oh, uh, it pays off. To. It pays <laughs> off. <laughs> but I saw a baseball cap, and it said, uh, veteran of World War II, the Korean War, and Vietnam. And I thought, wow. You know, who does this hat belong to? And then I saw a gentleman who, was, who had come out of the shower, uh, a, a tall guy, very distinguished looking, but he was, he was up in age. And he stopped and he started talking to me because he heard me laughing talking to another guy. But we talked and he talked about service to this country. And he told me he had been in three different unbelievable conflicts, but that he did it because he had traveled the world and understood that our form of government is the best in the world if you participate in it. And he just continued participating his whole life. And he told me never give up and never quit. I was complaining because I'm 65 years old and I was thinking, gee, I'm over the hill. He was going, oh no, you're just starting. But he was such a, a distinguished looking man, rather frail. He was 90 years old. Wow. Wow. He had lost his wife 14 months before that, and he told me he keeps going every day because he knows he lives in the best country in the world. When I hear people tell me that, and I hear that almost daily, it gets next to my heart. And it's why I do what I do all of the time. Well, we appreciate your service and your leadership, uh, Representative Abney, certainly uh, on this issue. And I think sometimes people forget the price that we've paid to have this great country and democracy, and that it also, we, with that freedom, comes responsibility and participating in our government as part of it. And with that participation, could you talk a little bit about how the numbers, how someone can become a delegate to the right. Democratic Convention? We will have, uh, in Philadelphia, I believe 33 uh, delegates and then two alternates. And uh, of that group, about nine, uh, there, are, there are four, we have four uh, delegate seats for the representatives, our national representatives, and we have four for the, uh, for people who are here in the Democratic Party and one for the governor. So that's, that's nine people that we have, but, we, but there's room for 20 something other individuals. Those individuals, if you want to become a delegate, simply either go online to our site, you have to be a registered Rhode Island Democrat or an unaffiliated mm -hmm. person who intends to vote in the Democratic primary, primary that we'll have coming up for 2016. There's a form you fill out, and then you have to go down to, and then a couple of days later, you have to go down to your, your local uh, election office and pick up the same forms that most of us do when we run for elective office. Uh, you then have to collect a certain number of signatures, I think it's 150 yeah. uh, signatures that you have to, to uh, uh, collect. And then de depending on whether you want to run as a district person in one of the districts that we have, or if you want to run as an at-large candidate, your name uh, will come out on the, uh, on the ballot that we will have this spring, 
and you have to uh, hope that your neighbors and friends will vote for you. Uh, it's, it's pretty simple. It's complicated in the sense that there are short windows to collect these signatures, but mm -hmm. it's very much like the same process that any of us who run for public office do. You have to declare that you want to run. You have to get the forms, fill them out, and we can help you do that if you decide that that's what you right. want to do. And so that, 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 uh, that nine number I was talking about, those people already know who they are, but many of the others are up for grabs in terms of becoming involved in that process. And that's what we're doing on the, the uh, Affirmative Action Committee, is trying to reach into the neighborhoods that have not, who feel like and who have not right. really been represented uh, in these uh, uh, primaries before, to say, listen, what you have to do is leave your home, walk out of your door, get involved, and it, make, it makes a difference. Yeah. Uh, nobody, no one's going to give you these things, but the opportunity is there. So we're working very hard. I know he's going to be working very hard to make sure that we have this information out on, on uh, Spanish radios. Uh, I'm going to make sure that uh, all of the organizations that work with African Americans uh, let people understand no. And then we, the committee, the Affirmative Action Committee, is composed of, it was like 20 something of us that was on that committee. Right. And we tried to have representation from every single ethnic group that we could imagine uh, that was in Rhode Island. Yep. Uh, and as such, we're going to make sure that people understand that. And we have a formula that will help us make sure that those are represented also. But that's the way that you get that, that process done. It's very much right. like running right. an election. And I love it because it reflects the huge tent that the yes. Democratic Party has. And I think it's interesting, even at one of our first meetings where Representative Anastasia Williams said, I want to make sure when we deal with in hearings at the State House, the deaf and hard of hearing community is represented. And I was just so proud of her, and we have made an effort reaching out to that community, making sure we have interpreters to involve them. But also, Mayor Diosa, one of our state committee members, I'm not going to, his first name is Carlos, <laughs> from Providence, great guy, yeah. great guy. Yeah. But he said to me, Mr. Chairman, he said, you know, sometimes I feel as though the Democratic Party takes all Latino voters, you just think we're all the same and all automatically Democrats. Yeah. That's not the case. And we had an interesting conversation. Could you expound on that a little bit? Yeah, so I think, uh, uh, so the, he, he says, you know, uh, we're all, Lat everyone pretty much brushes us with a broad brush uh, and says, you know, all Latinos are the same. but. Different countries have different beliefs, and oh, yeah. it sort of breaks down yeah. into that. But I think a majority of Latinos, especially in Rhode Island, uh, consider themselves true blue Democrats. And I think uh, you, we've seen uh, the amount of, of energy there is during campaigns and how deciding the Latino vote can be, especially in local races. So uh, he, he did mention that. That was uh, very funny. Uh, but it, it is true, and uh, that's why the outreach is so important and engaging them, and the fact that you've been able to uh, be very open with the information and, and have it accessible is going to make a very big, big difference. I, th I thought that was an interesting point, and I know myself, having traveled last uh, winter, I was in Central America yeah. and Costa Rica and Nicaragua, yeah. and you find the differences, and I've traveled on the west coast of uh, South America as well, and Mexico, yeah. the different uh, subtleties in culture, language, and philosophical approach to government. Mm -hmm. So it is a very diverse caucus yes. and group, and we certainly have to be respectful of all of our Latino nationalities. Yes. Uh, very, very interesting. Yes. But, but, but I think uh, the caucus that you were able to put together uh, is, is tasked with such a big responsibility and the outcome I know will be uh, very good for the Democratic Party. It's a huge responsibility and as I say, it's not just our color schemes or anything like that. We're talking about people you know, who have disabilities and may or may not be able to, to get out and what we want to capture uh, is the thoughts, the wishes, the priorities that all of these individuals have. That's what makes the Democratic Party so good. Uh, we argue among each other, you know, which is a good thing, but we, at the end of the day, we have a, a, a program that will affect 
a lot of different people. Uh, you know, black people have the same issues as white people or Hispanics do when you come to economics or it comes to health care or it comes to your neighborhood or safety. It's the same. So you, you, you have to put together a coalition of individuals that you can get all that information from to fundle it up to the candidates. Obviously, there's going to be one candidate for the Democratic nomination for president, as they is the Republican. But you want that individual, whoever it is, to have had the opportunity to have listened to the thoughts, the wishes, the desires, uh, all of the different cultural parts of everyone. And right. that's why we work so hard to make that work. Mm -hmm. So, Representative Abney, one of our concerns is we're engaging all of these individuals. How do we keep them engaged in the process? That's a very good question. Number one, because not everyone will get to become a delegate. Uh, even if you want to be a delegate, uh, you just simply may not win that particular election. But it, it doesn't mean that you should, you know, get disinvolved in the process. There are a number of ways that you can do that. I myself uh, uh, is, is a member of the Newport City Committee, for example. So we have uh, city committees uh, for, for Democrats. We have caucuses. Uh, and I'm sure that there will be other community meetings. So, it, you know, just because you don't become a delegate, even if you try, you have to stay involved. And the best way is to, is to go to the, the local committee things, because it's your neighbors that you're talking with and that you're talking to. Mm -hmm. It's very interesting, and I know your involvement in Newport is when I speak with the Hibernians in the St. Patrick's Day Parade, they say, well, <laughs> Representative Abney is one of our uh, honorary St. Yeah. Patrick's Day Hibernians <laughs> and very popular and well-received in Newport. So I know that you're very involved. Uh, Mayor Deosa, do you have in Central Falls, I know you're, you have a robust uh, city council, do you have a Democratic city committee in Central Falls? Yeah, we. Uh, one of my priorities when I came into office is, and, and being such a uh, big Democrat, uh, was to revive the city committee. So we've been able to bring on uh, some folks, uh, very diverse, uh, young and or, or diverse in age, and we've been able to reignite the, Demo uh, the city Democratic Party uh, committee in Central Falls to where we hosted the chairs of all the town and city uh, uh, of, of the Democrats around the state in one of our restaurants. And uh, it was overwhelming the amount of support uh, that the Central Falls City Committee received in being the host of this great meeting. I was able to join them for a few minutes, and uh, people were just talking about the excitement about having Central Falls back and establishing a committee. Wow, because yes. in the old days, Pawtucket and Central Falls, and like they still have like the, the Pawtucket Second Ward Democratic yeah, yeah. Club and uh, the Fifth Ward in Providence. But uh, I'm just curious, what restaurant did you uh, host the Democratic it's, City Committee? It's Chef? called La Casona. It's on Broad La Street, Casona. yes. Wow. Yeah, so they, they really enjoy the the cuisine. Uh, and it's interesting, Mayor, I have to say that you have done an excellent job promoting Central Falls as a dining destination. I mean, there's a lot of folks around the state, and you mentioned Central Falls, what do they think of? Stanley's. Yes. But as you go through the city, there are many more uh, restaurants today. How many restaurants do you have? We have about 30 restaurants uh, representing many of the Central and South America countries, Portuguese, big, um, uh, Cape Verdean as well. Cape Verdean, yeah. uh, and it's, it just keeps on growing. Uh, if you want some of the best tacos and you want to leave Taco Bell to the side, come up to <laughs> Central Falls. and. Uh, you'll have a, a great experience, and you'll be able to learn more about the culture. And uh, I know at Stanley's and on Dexter and Broad Street, there's parking Correct. available. And I can't recall whether it's metered parking or we, it's two we, hours. We try to be as friendly as possible, so we, we don't have meters, uh, accessibility to parking uh, off, off site, site or on the street is available. And uh, Stanley's is a great restaurant, one of the best burgers, I think, in Rhode Island. And uh, I think it's been our, 
our beacon as far as restaurants throughout the I state. Be, I hate to say it, but you know, we have a lot of all, all of my uh, hamburger place uh, restaurants in my district will com complain, but it is a very, very good burger, yeah. and it's been in business. Oh, over for 50 years. 50 yeah. years and very unique and was recently redone. It is uh, definitely, definitely uh, a destination. I know that your two representatives, Representative McLaughlin and Representative uh, Maldonado, have both advocated for, and I think this is interesting and a, a great point, for assistance for city libraries because they're so important. Could you just comment on that? Yes. I know Representative Maldonado had legislation yeah, she, relating to it. And she's very big about making uh, services like the library more accessible to our kids. Uh, many of our families don't, uh, don't have access to the internet uh, to do their homework, so they use the library. And uh, after the bankruptcy, uh, the library did suffer. Hours were cut, staffing was cut, and through this funding that, uh, that Shelby Maldonado, our representative, and Jim McLaughlin uh, were able to uh, receive is going to help tremendously to all our kids who, who need the assistance. And I think one of our democratic values is we want the best education for all our kids and access to it. So uh, we, we, we're so happy with our two reps for uh, working so hard to secure this funding and making our libraries much more accessible to our kids. Oh, yeah. I know in Warwick, our public library is extremely active. It was a great resource when I was in school, spent a lot of time there, even in college. Public li a pub public library is essential, and especially with internet access. Yes. As an administrator in Pawtucket, we had students that would leave school, go right to the library, and that was their after-school activity. Very, very involved. Uh, Representative Abney, you've been involved in education with uh, at the state level and financing. The schools in uh, your district in Middletown ranked very high. Newport is doing a lot better than it was. I know you increased funding for uh, both of those communities. Uh, what do you see as a major issue affecting education uh, in the next few years? Well, the biggest issue uh, that I can see for the next few years, particularly when we talk about uh, public education, is how do we fund it to the degree that we can have a uh, more STEM-type education within the, the, the public system? And number two, uh, how do we finance the, uh, the tremendous amount of money that it takes to educate you know, children who have disabilities. I think that's yeah. overlooked sometimes. Uh, we, we look at numbers a lot, and we look at teachers, we look at unions, but public schools uh, have to make sure that everyone is educated. My wife, for example, is a I retired educator. Uh, she retired last year, but she's, she's back for a few days as we sit here now because there's a, a, a student that has to be taken care of really good. So uh, I, I think, you know, those two things are going to, uh, are the biggest issues that, that all systems have to deal with in, in the future. I think the common thread when we talk about the concerns of Democrats is that one thing we realize is that we all do better when we're all doing better. Correct. That uh, we have to offer opportunity, especially for our students. Correct. And I agree with you, Representative Abney. We also have to minimize the disparities that we see in educational achievement. Your zip code should not determine the quality mm -hmm. of your education. Okay. And when I look back at uh, my time as a, a teacher and administrator in Pawtucket, uh, I was always very amazed is that our graduates from Shea High School and all the alternative learning in Tolman would come back and offer uh, their time and talent back to the community, much like Maya Diosa has done, and also uh, Representative Abney much like you have done in your service uh, to our country and to the state. And uh, with that, I would like to thank both of you 
for uh, coming on today's show. Thank you. And I would hope that our viewers get involved in this most important year by looking into becoming a delegate and uh, supporting communities, uh, activities, democratic communities in your activity. Thank you and have a great day.